Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Zoller Seitz. Uh, thank you so much for coming out to the Museum of Moving Images final screening in their Terrence Malick Film Festival. Uh, and I guess before I begin, I want to thank uh, Fred and Richard and the audiovisual crew in the back who made this entire weekend possible. It's just been fantastic. It's really great that we're closing out with this. I guess we would anyway, because chronologically it's the last one he made before Tree of Life, which is opening really soon. Yay! <laughs> uh, I, I joked the other night at one of these things that it's like, uh, I'm uh, 14 years old again and Return of the Jedi is about to come out. Like, that's how excited I am about this. Um, the New World came out in 2005. It is Terrence Malick's fourth film that tells the story of the relationship between Pocahontas and John Smith and her uh, husband, John Rolfe, the man she was with after John Smith. But that, if anybody who's seen it before, you can, you know that description doesn't quite get at it, just as a description of the plot of any Terrence Malick film doesn't quite get at those films. Uh, it's a story about, well, where to begin? It's, first of all, it's a story of the difference between, I think, the internal life of individuals and the, and the world that's around them, the culture that shapes them. It's a story of culture clash between the Powhatan tribe and the English settlers who uh, have a very uneasy relationship with them. And every step of the way, you can kind of see the tribe gauging their reaction to these newcomers and thinking that maybe they just want a small piece of land on the coast and we'll just leave them alone and everything will be fine, uh, versus let's drive them into the sea. That's the reaction of one of the people in the tribe. And uh, it's about the relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas, who are representatives of their respective cultures. And uh, I rewatched one of the three versions of this movie. I believe we're going to see the second one today, the second theatrical cut. And one of the things that really jumped out at me was how many scenes in this movie are about communication and negotiation. And, and uh, not too much elaboration is necessary except to say that, that each of the cultures has their own language, their own, their own gestures, their own set of assumptions. And watching them work things out and watching them either go towards each other and merge or else stand back and be careful and be cautious is, is one of the many joys of this movie. Uh, the use of voiceover, I think, is also extraordinary, a, a leap beyond, in my opinion, anything that Malick has done before. In the first two films he did, Badlands and Days of, Days of Heaven, he had one narrator. And it was a somewhat unreliable narration that was occasionally at odds with the action on screen and created all sorts of interesting con contradictions and complexities. But then in The Thin Red Line, uh, he took this leap into multiple narrators. And there were, I'm still not entirely sure how many narrators there are, because I thought I had it pinned down, and then somebody emailed me to tell me that they had identified yet another narrator in that movie, <laughs> who apparently doesn't even have any speaking parts on the screen. <laughs> um, and uh, in this movie, John Smith, Pocahontas, and John Rolfe are the three main narrators, but there are several others, and they sort of flit in and out of consciousness. And there are moments where characters who you would think would not get an internal monologue do get one. And uh, ultimately, what does this language do? Well, my friend Bilga Ibiri, who's a critic for New York Magazine, wrote this wonderful piece for the Museum of the Moving Images online magazine, which I really suggest that you check out, about the use of language in the new world. And his theory, which I think is a good one, is that the very poetic language, very literary language that you hear in this movie when people are speaking to themselves or in their own heads is not is supposed to be representative of thoughts and it's not supposed to be representative of dialogue. It's sort of the inner person. And it's the person who's striving to make sense of events or to grasp events. And it's not so much a matter of your traditional voiceover narration of, you know, damn it, I'm late. You know, it's not like that at all. It's something a lot more rarefied and, and frankly easy to make fun of um, there's a certain amount of credulity that you have to have to, to get into a Terrence Malick film, and I had a sneaking suspicion that there's a lot of that here, otherwise you wouldn't have turned out at five on a Sunday. Um, and without further ado, um, my favorite film, The New World. <laughs> 